Hey, it's Joe from Train Out of Pain. This week, we are going to be talking about why light is more important than food if you have fibromyalgia. Now, I am not stating that food is not important. Far from it, actually. Food can assist you in healing from fibromyalgia. It's one small piece of the puzzle, but it can also make you feel worse as well. If you're consuming processed foods, packaged foods, then you're probably going to be dealing with IBS, constipation, diarrhea, bloating, gas, or even get an old-fashioned flare-up. I have found over the years there's a few different types of foods that always made me feel worse and I haven't consumed them in quite some time just for that reason. But if we're looking at fibromyalgia and we're looking at the underlying causes of fibromyalgia, then we have to look a little bit deeper. Stress and trauma are not underlying causes for fibromyalgia. They are triggers. There is something much deeper that happens that eventually you lose tolerance to your environment and then boom, some type of a trigger happens, you have fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia happens because of lifestyle choices and environment. And environment especially affects your mitochondria. The biggest impact on your mitochondria is probably your light environment. What is your light environment? That is the light that you are living under at all times. From the light that you have in your home to the light that you work under to being outside, those are all different light environments and they all matter significantly to your hormones, to your neurotransmitters, and basically down to the cellular level including your mitochondria. So how can we increase our mitochondrial function? How can we optimize our mitochondrial function so that we can start healing from fibromyalgia? Food can, to some degree, food can help. But if we really wanna talk about optimizing and improving your mitochondria, we gotta talk about your light environment, specifically the sun and infrared light from the sun. You have five cytochromes in your mitochondria. You don't need to know this stuff, but I want to talk about it. Three of those five are infrared light receptors, meaning that's what they look for to improve the function of mitochondria is they look for infrared light. So if you're living an indoor existence, which most of us are these days, you're not getting infrared light. If you look online at biohackers, you will see a lot of them using infrared light. I even have an infrared light box that I use at home if I'm not getting enough sun, which very rarely happens. But that infrared light absolutely increases mitochondrial function. So what else does it do? Well, we use ATP as energy. We consume food to create ATP, but we can also create ATP from infrared light very easily actually. So the more time you're spending out in the sun, you are going to increase your mitochondrial function. We've got to make sure that we're keeping our skin uncovered as much as possible and the eyes are also uncovered. No sunglasses, no contacts, wear glasses, pull them on the edge of your nose. We want to get light through your eye, on your skin, on your gut, definitely a big one, and on your lung tissue. All of those things matter considerably. But when we get that infrared light into our mitochondria, we produce ATP without consuming food. What does that mean? That means that the more time we spend out in the sun, the less food we need and the less water we need to consume as well because your mitochondria make ATP and they also make water. Huge. The more time you're spending out in the sun, you're going to need less food and less water and you're going to be improving the function of your mitochondria. That is the number one thing that we're looking at here. So this week, we're going to be talking about a few ways that light can help you improve your mitochondria, improve your health, improve your cellular health, and improve your fibromyalgia. As always, I encourage you guys to research this stuff for yourself. I will just give you this caveat. If you're going to research mitochondria, grab a helmet. It's a deep, dark rabbit hole, and there's a lot of very uh, head-splitting information that you're going to be reading and consuming so just strap your head in but if you guys have any comments any questions which i always you encourage you guys to comment you know on any of these posts that i have leave a comment down below if you're not comfortable leaving a comment send me a message be more than happy to have any type of dialogue about this talk to you soon